I tried to drown this Monta watch in the ocean, but unfortunately it didn't want to die. It just wants to live and thrive to play for another day. So why did I try to drown it, you ask? Is there something wrong with the watch? Or even worse, is there something wrong with me? Let's find out. Some of you may not have heard of the brand Monta. It's a small company, it's run by watch enthusiasts that produce very well made and very well finished watches. Just have a look at some of their GMTs. And this Noble is more of a luxury sports orientated watch with its 150 meters of water resistance, 38 and a half mil case sizing. It's got an excellent bracelet with on the fly adjustability. And I can see a watch like this trying to compete for your hard earned dollars against many brands like Omega, Seiko, Longines, or even Rolex with their OPs and date justs. Now it's right about here that many people are gonna get offended because I said there's a possibility of comparing a micro brand with any of the above mentioned majors. And this is why I tried to drown this watch because with its quality finish and attention to detail, this watch is trying to step on the shoes of my Aquaterra. And for those who know, I love my Aquaterra. So I tried to kill this watch by drowning it. Unsuccessfully, I must add. Now I know that this watch is not in the same league with any major brand with the tried and tested history, in-house movements, pedigree, not to mention many of the historical timepieces from each of these manufacturers. But in saying that, this Noble on the wrist is doing some things exactly the same as my Omega Aquaterra. And in some areas, even better. And that's exactly who this watch is targeted for. The enthusiast who's aspiring towards a watch from any reputable major brand, but struggling to save the money. Or, trying to justify the cost differential when a watch of this calibre can pretty much fulfil the void without the massive hit in their back pocket. Now you saw the pop-up, Monta has sponsored this video, however, with all companies, they have zero input into the review content. I'll tell you what I think about this watch, good, bad or indifferent. Now many of you who've been following me for a while know that I'm a professional photographer by trade, and I've been absolutely flat out shooting many gigs recently, so I've decided to do this review slightly differently. And because I'm time poor with my full-time profession, I've decided to wear this Monta Noble in conjunction with another microbrand watch that was delivered to me on the same day when this came in. In other words, throughout the week, every day, I've been wearing this Monta for the first six hours of every day and then rotate it with the other microbrand for the rest of the afternoon and evening. And I've been alternating the morning and afternoon shifts between the watches just to see how they behave in different lighting scenarios, different situations as the week has progressed. Now you notice I've not mentioned the name of the other micro brand and I'm not going to mention it either. Why? Because to be quite frank, that's really not fair for that watch. Because every time I place this Noble on my wrist for its daily rotation, the satisfaction I get from it and its wearing experience is in a completely different league to the other brand. The wearing experience of this is very similar to my Omega Aquaterra, and I love my Omega. So if I'm gonna tell you how good this watch wore and behaved on the wrist throughout the week and try to compare the feelings it gave me with the other micro brand, it'd be like comparing oranges and apples. It really can't be done. Looking at the specs of this watch, the dimensions for a sports watch are ideal. With a case diameter of 38.6 and a case height of 9.9 mil, that is wonderful. The crown is a 5.9 mil conical signed screw down crown. Surprisingly, it's been an absolute delight to use and I don't like conical crowns. And this one has been ideal. The watch also offers 150 meters of water resistance and the total weight sized to my 18 centimeter wrist is exactly 131 grams. And this is where the watch has been shining, on my wrist. As a luxury sports watch, it's been a really good experience. The height at 9.9 millimeters has been an absolute joy. Even that bracelet, it's an oyster style bracelet with female end links, on the fly adjustability with that clasp. This has been a real joy. And the level of finishing and micro detail has been fantastic on this watch. From the rhodium plated diamond cut handset, the applied indices with BGW9 Superluminova, I really wanted to get up close and personal to see how well this watch is manufactured. And looking at the finishing in detail, it's very impressive. Now it's not a perfect watch, there are some negatives which I'll speak about. 
but I must say micro brands are delivering such good quality these days. Whether you're a watch enthusiast or a collector, you gotta take your hat off. The attention to detail and the final quality product that's provided is of a very high standard. Top marks. Now I did mention at the start of the video that this watch is doing a few things a little bit better than my Aquaterra and some of them not so good. The negatives, which I'm gonna to get to. So what sort of things does it do better? And for me, that crown, I like it. And I'm not a fan of conical crowns. And for some reason, this one here has been a joy to use, an absolute joy to grab. It's very easy to grab. It's only 5.9 mil. It's been a great knurling experience, wonderful to wind, excellent on the latch down. It locks in, it's very silky smooth. I'm quite impressed. The bracelet has been another hero of this watch. Being an oyster style bracelet with female end links, as you can see, it drops straight down. The articulation is wonderful on each link. It's got screw pins. The watch features a milled clasp with one snap, a lock, and away you go. And you can see there's no micro adjustability. It's all done on the fly. It snaps open, it slides to the appropriate position, and away you go. Now if we turn the watch over, you can see there's a display case back, sapphire crystal on the back, and behind that sapphire is the Caliber M22, which is basically a Solita SW300, or a clone of the ETA2892. And for those who know that movement, it's a proven movement, it's utilized in many brands today, like Zinn, Longines, Breitling, Hamilton, IWC. Many manufacturers have used that movement as a base caliber. So the movement here is well chosen, it's thin, it's reliable, and it's nicely finished. Next, if I turn my attention to the loom, the watch features BGW9 on the handset and the applied indices, and for a sports watch, it's excellent. I've enjoyed seeing this watch light up when I walk indoors from an outside sunny day. So again, in that department, it's doing a very, very good job. Lastly, the crystal on this watch is a flat sapphire. It has seven layers of AR on the underside. It is doing a superb job. Again, top marks. On a technical aspect and design point of view, the watch is really hitting a lot of points, which I'm quite impressed. However, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are negatives on this watch. And for me, first cab off the rank, that crown, as good as it is in usage, it also sticks out a little bit too much. For me, it would have been nice if that profile, it was a little bit in, maybe a millimeter or so, because sometimes the watch might actually grab on the wrist. It could be a bit of a hindrance. Second negative for me is that clasp. Although the finishing is exceptional, the micro adjustability has been fantastic. I've noticed that throughout the week when I go to snap it closed, it's quite a bit of effort required to close this clasp. So on the wrist underneath, you really have to put your, your finger underneath to snap it. It's been firm. Now, whether that's gonna loosen up in usage, I'm not sure. Throughout the week, it's been exactly the same. It's just been a really firm experience, which hasn't been to my liking. I would have preferred a little bit of an easier close. And objectively speaking, probably the last negative I can say about this watch is the price. The watch comes in just a tad over $2,500. That's a little steep. Albeit the watch is finished and executed superbly, I think many people might find it difficult to justify that sort of money on a micro brand. But I can tell you with a surety, the watch's execution, the attention to detail, the behavior on the wrist has been on the top level. And something you'd probably expect from much higher price watches. So moving over to the positives of this watch, the quality workmanship, the detail, the bracelets, comfort and adjustability, the loom, very, very good for a sports watch. That profile and height at 9.9 millimeters has been a real delight. The dial for me has also been very impressive. It gives off a particular mood with its degradé finishing. It fades from black on the outer extremes to blue in the center with the most subtle sunburst effects. Quite a bit of a looker as well in certain lighting situations. That frame date window at the six o'clock, that's been an easy read. And last positive, the enjoyment factor on the wrist. This has been right up there in comfort and enjoyment with any top major brand I've worn as a sports watch. So in that department, I think it's a great value for money. Let me know your thoughts, guys. The Monta Noble, I'll leave the links in the description. Get on their website. They've got some GMTs. They've got this particular watch in different colorways as well. Surprisingly, very, very good. And although it's a little bit pricey, I think as a finalized product, what I've got in the hand has not disappointed. But if anything, it's put a smile on my face every time I've looked down to observe the time. Stay well and safe. Enjoy this hobby. 
and we'll see you all in the next video.